You know, 640 kilograms, it seems like a lot of weight, and it is, but how much? Well, for our American viewers, allow me to do the math. It's about 1,410 pounds, and for our British viewers, allow me to do the maths. It's about 100 stone. You know, it's hard to understand exactly how heavy 640 kilograms is without some sort of comparison. I mean, what weighs 640 kilograms? Well, for one thing, a milk cow weighs 640 kilograms. How about the heart of a large blue whale? Yeah, that's about 1,400 pounds. Even John Brower Minnick weighed 1,400 pounds. God rest his soul. And I think maybe Nelson P.K.'s ego could weigh about 1,400 pounds. Hopefully that helps. You know, an average road car is about 4,000 pounds, so comparatively 640 kilograms isn't that much. In fact, it's, as cars go, pretty lightweight. You start to see the differences between them. But in Formula One, weight is the enemy. It's the weight of a large blue whale's heart. So how does F1 manage 640 kilograms? Well, they do it pretty well. And they do it very quickly. You see, 640 kilograms is the weight the car must weigh in Formula One, including the driver, at all times. Now, most of the teams make their cars much lighter than 640 kilograms, and they add ballast to the car to make up the difference. And you have to throw in Kurs, because Kurs weighs, oh gosh, 35 kilograms, or in old money, that's about 77 pounds. And so does the driver. The driver makes a big difference to the weight factor, and if you think about a guy like Mark Webber, well, he has a bigger impact in Formula One than, say, oh, Felipe Massa, Timo Glock. Mark's a big boy. If you consider the amount of horsepower, around 800, 850 horsepower in a Formula One car, then you get the idea of how violently these cars can be thrown around. At 640 kilograms to 850 horsepower, well, it's pretty amazing. The power to weight ratio is about 1,300 horsepower per ton. Theoretically, this means a Formula One car could go from, say, zero to 60 miles an hour in around one second. But that kind of power can't be really put down on the track because of a lack of traction. Well, it can, but only when a Formula One car is going really fast. You see, an F1 car generates downforce at speed, and the faster it goes, the more downforce it creates. It almost smashes the car into the tarmac itself, and it creates insane amounts of grip. This is how cars can go around those corners and go down those straights so fast, and they can break incredibly quickly. In fact, a driver will experience a force that's 1.4 to 1.5 times that of Earth's gravity. Another fact? Turn eight at the Turkish Grand Prix, yeah, that generates four and a half, five and a half G's for seven seconds. Think about that. That's six times the car's own weight. 640 kilograms can be thrown around so violently that take a corner like Cops and Silverstone. To generate six G's in that corner from a Formula One car, if you were in another road car, supercar, a Lamborghini, a Ferrari, something like that, in that same corner at speed, those cars would generate one to two G's. And we've all heard this number, but a Formula One car can go from zero to 100, back to zero, in around five seconds. The fastest production car ever made, the Bugatti Veyron, does that same thing around 12 seconds. But the primary goal of a Formula One car isn't just top line speed, it's really acceleration into corners and out of corners and through corners. After all, this is a road series. And to do that, you have to have some serious brakes. So how do you stop 640 kilograms that's going 185 miles an hour? You do it with some serious aerodynamics and you do it with some serious brakes. Under braking, a Formula One car can generate around 4 Gs. And if you're Martin Brundle, well, it can create about 5 to 6 Gs and literally force the air from your lungs. 
massive carbon fiber brake systems are on these Formula One cars and they can stop them incredibly quick. In fact, if we had those brakes on our cars, our cars would go tens of thousands of miles before we'd ever have to change our brakes. A Formula One car uses those in one race. In order to stop a Formula One car, you're going to need brakes. And good thing is they come with brakes. However, they have a little bit of a helper in Formula One cars. It's called aerodynamic drag or downforce. You've probably heard Paul Charsley or Nico Ronde talk about this on previous Rolling Speed episodes. But the fact is, is that when a driver is going down a straight and lifts his foot off of the throttle, the aerodynamic downforce or drag on that car creates as much braking force as we create by pushing our pedal in our road cars. It's astounding. And so now you can see with these massive brakes and with the aerodynamic effect of lifting off of the throttle, well, the cars can slow down really quickly. This is how they generate four or five Gs under braking. It's incredible. And anyone that's ever got into an F1 car notices the braking the very first thing. It's amazing those cars even stay on the track surface. And at speed, when you're going through medium speed or high speed corners, it's astounding. The Gs you pull, the car's just got to simply fly off the corner, and yet it doesn't. You know, the next time you hear someone try to compare Formula One to another racing series, just firmly and politely insert your fingers into your ears. There is no comparison. Formula One is the pinnacle of technology in motorsport racing. The closest thing I can think of is perhaps Audi's R18 and the Le Mans LMP1 category. It's an incredible piece of machinery as well, but it's 550 horsepower. It's a lot heavier than a Formula One one car. And if someone says, well, you know, wait a minute, what about dragsters and drag strips? That's true, they generate a heck of a lot of g-forces and they put a lot of power down on those tires and they go really, really fast. But simply ask them to turn right or left at the end of the quarter mile. Oh, and one other thing, the next time someone says to you, gee, those Formula One cars are gas guzzlers and a waste of fuel, remind them that these cars do get three to four miles per gallon, but in doing so, they generate 850 horsepower, and they revolve at 18,000 RPMs. In fact, this makes the Formula One engine one of the most fuel-efficient engines in the world. In fact, the Formula One car is more efficient at burning fossil fuel than the Toyota Prius. Think about it.